Hello everyone. I'm going to give you offer related to CCI lab. In this lab, what you will find, so let me quickly show you that. In this lab, you have multiples switches. You can see you have more than 16 switches, 20 routers. You have a Steven full-fledged lab. Actually, this is complete uh, CCI Enterprise 1.0 lab where you can do section 1, section 2, section 3. Maybe you know that in CC exam you have three different sections. It's already sections are defined but generally these three sections that students are practicing and in this three sections you can perform everything. All the tasks you can perform in this particular Eve NG lab. You can see the version and the supported images this is exact match that we have in the exam as well. So for example, for SD-WAN, you need to work on VAGs and the uh, vManage. Release is 18.4. That's the same release we have in the exam as well. So this will be your very much uh, similar lab setup that you have in your CCI exam for your practice purpose. Now, what you can't do in this lab, you can't do lab related to DNA because in this EVNG lab, we don't have Cisco DNAC integration and you can't do uh, ICE lab as well because in this, we don't have ICE integration as well. For that practice, you need full-fledged online rake from any good place you can go and have it. But apart from that, apart from 2.0, 1 to the 2 actually you can go and perform all the tasks even if you are not practicing for your cci exam for example you are practicing for your ccnp and you want to check your ospf knowledge bgp knowledge mpls knowledge uh, sd wan knowledge all those tasks you can go and perform in this lab with this lab i'm providing the video guide how to do all those tasks. Even we have the lab guide as well. So you can simply follow those guide. You can simply go and complete all those tasks. Suppose if you are new to the technology, so I have multiple free videos in YouTube and Udemy that you can go and refer to upskill your knowledge to learn the technology. And then simply you can go and use this particular lab and you can break any CCNP CCI exam means you, you will pass it um, uh, easily. Now what is the cost? And these are the sections that we have in the CCI exam. So what is the cost of this? Because I'm offering this for the student so I put very little a small cost here. So you have to pay only 150 USD to get this particular software and uh, how you can go and get it you have to email me so my email address you can send me one email request let me write here ratnesh721 kumar721 at the rate gmail.com just email me and uh, send me the request and I will give you this particular nice software, full-fledged software, EVNG software or the file where you can go and practice your CCNA, CCNP, CCI, SD1, full-fledged SD1 is there. So if you can go and watch my YouTube videos, in YouTube I have 22 hours SD1 uh, video recording file and so many SD1 videos I have uploaded in YouTube those YouTube videos also you need some lab setup, right, to practice. So even if you're not preparing for your CCNP or CCI, simply you want to learn uh, Cisco SD-WAN, you can go watch my free videos in YouTube, use this particular lab setup and you can perform your SD-WAN. You can become master in the SD-WAN. Likewise, if you're preparing for CCNP, in CCNP, again, we know that we have N core and one elective. For that also, you can go and perform all the tasks related to routing and switching, OSP, BGP, everything in this lab. It's a full-fledged lab. So I will recommend you to send this email right away. Take this particular lab, practice, enhance your skill, and become very good in the market so you will get high paid salaries.
I like. After that, you go and watch the technology video. Thanks for watching. Thanks for joining. Today we are doing ICE day one session. And in this session, we are going to discuss about basics of ICE. But this particular session is going to be uh, utilized within CCI security training as well. So this knowledge will be very important. Let me mark this is a day one session for ICE and we are going to learn basics of ICE. And this training session has so many different type of uh, labs. We'll go and explore different, different vendor lab as well. And we'll perform all those tasks. The overall agenda is to learn the ICE, to how to deploy, how to do the policy configuration, what are different features we have in the ICE. And plus other agenda is this, that uh, this information, how we can utilize uh, to pass our CCI exam as well. So this particular training is going to solve both the purpose. Let's just start. So we know that Cisco had changed the exam. And if you go for CCI, new CCI nowadays, you will see that you have to do one core paper and then you have to go for the lab exam. Earlier it was something like uh, you have written CCI written exam and then CCI lab, but now they have made this little bit more, you can say that uh, student friendly. Uh, you have uh, to go for your CCI exam. You have to pass any of the core paper, for example, enterprise core. Then you can go and write uh, CCI enterprise and CCI wireless. Then security core, you can write CCI security service provider, collaboration and data center core. Like that they have DC core, S core, in course like that we have all these exams so one is your professional level part one of your exam and then you have to go and write part two that is your eight hour lab exam i have one recorded video in youtube that in the lab exam how it is means what is the format of lab exam they are checking design and do three hours of design and then five hours of do that is uh, deployment and optimization like that okay so i will not go that much deal, detail is in this but if you want you can check my youtube video where you can understand the exam format and changes the same thing here within ccnp you have to go and uh, take the core exam and then you can go and write the lab exam. Okay, let's just start Cisco ICE. Now we know that Cisco ICE is, at the moment we can see that this is identity services engine, but this is not the final evaluated or this is not the final product. Earlier it was something like ACS, access control services, like that it got evolved. So what was the main goal for this product was that to provide some sort of access control uh, in terms of uh, user authentication, in terms of which particular user group will get how much access or authorization control like that this product got evolved. And now if you go and log into ICE, ICE2.x, ICE3.x, you will see that it has n number of features. So isn't ICE is something that can do identity services? So why this particular product? First of all, it's quite popular. Secondly, why it has so many features? The point here is this, that you know that the network has grown. So in network nowadays, you don't have only LAN, WAN, DC. You have IoT, you have sensors, you have so many different type of devices. These devices, either the network can understand these devices with their MAC address or network can, can understand these devices with their username and password. Right. So these devices having some identity, that identity, this particular appliance, ICE appliance should understand according to those identities and different type of attributes, 
you can go and make a rule and then as per that rule or policy ice will provide access right so that's the overall goal we have with the ice and uh, uh, you will see going forward that yes ice uh, can provide all these nice features and ice can integrate with cisco very nice evaluated product that is cisco dna one of the nice product that cisco has at, at the moment in the market along with cisco sd wan v manage and cisco aci cisco dna is awesome from cisco dna that will be your uh, one management platform from where you can manage the wired and wireless network right so that is one very interesting thing we have uh, later on we'll see this integration but uh, as a definition point of view what ice will do so ice is used for authentication authorization and accounting right and we, okay so i can say okay uh, authentication means that maybe first point of contact someone has to authenticate with the mac address or username or maybe some ip address etc etc is long list of authentication methodologies we have likewise once someone will get authenticated so that is phase one he, he completed phase one then in phase two how much access he needs or with that authentication the policy so whatever policy we have created for authorization with that authorization policy how much access will be granted to that particular system and that particular system may be anything maybe any user maybe any mac address maybe ip phones maybe anything uh, within the network and once that ICE will provide that authorization, then obviously the accounting thing will come into the picture. So once someone has logged in to system where ICE has provided the access with the ICE policy, then with help of accounting, how long he is doing all this activity. Right. So that is in a rough, that is AAA authentication authorization and accounting is very easy right so then how this ice is providing this and why this ice product is so big and is it this much complicated or complex to learn because you will see at the moment in the market there is no much very good ice engineers you know there are two reasons for that first of all uh, whenever you will practice with ice so ice is something that is part of network right so when you practice with ice you will not get full fledged environment where you can go and test all the labs or all the use cases so suppose if i go install ice in my laptop this ice vm and try to do the lab setting i ca I, I can't do everything means all the policies for example for wireless authentication or wireless users for ip users for uh, lan users etc et for tacacus for radius all these authentication methodologies is very difficult second thing is this that once you go and log into the eyes you will see so many features are there and somehow if someone is very new he will lost because so many options and within option you have so many other options and all those things are there so it is something that actually in first instance little bit difficult to learn but if someone will go step by step by step i will understand because it's like logical and again in network most of the things are logical if logic is right then you're right like that if you go and put all the uh, all the pieces uh, and you know step by step try to learn this and then you will be very good in the eyes so let's try to learn this as you know ice is identity service engine so it can go and learn different type of identity identities for different type of devices and according to that it can go and take the decision that's the thing that we are discussing from last 10 minutes oops uh-huh so you can see that uh, 
some some history about ice that ACS was there earlier and then uh, ice came into the picture and uh, things have started. Now, this class is not only that we'll go and learn few policies of ice and perform the lab. In this session or in this in this class or series of classes, what we want to understand here is this, that there is ice designing and deployment as well. Okay. Now, if you work in any enterprise network, you will see that uh, they are spread across different different geographical locations maybe um, some of office is in APAC some is in EMEA some is in USA like they are very dispersed they are at very dispersed locations right and when we are talking about one identity service or one identity appliance for one company Right. So in that case, just think logically, in that case, users in US, they have to go and get authenticated in ICE server in APAC or EMEA, right? If we do not set some local ICE server in that region, then they have to go and so request ICE authentication authorization has to go across the geographical boundary reach out to that location and once authenticated it will uh, give the access that's the one design related uh, aspect that we can discuss the other thing is this that okay i have 20000 endpoints or 20000 devices that i want to create profile or that i want to do i services i want to enable i services for those 20000 devices now is it ICE database is that much big or is it ICE process is that much large or huge that it can process all the request, uh, you know, within fraction of milliseconds and all. And this is one of the thing like volume, what will be the volume or sizing of the ICE. Then third thing here is this, that think like this, okay, you have three different locations and in all three different locations, users try to get the authentication. Wired user, wireless user, and you have one ICE server. So is it possible for ICE at a time if it is getting 500 requests per second, for example, hypothetical number, 500 requests per second, can ICE can go and provide the access for all these 500 requests? Because once it, it will get the request, some authentication authorization process will go and then the user will get the access, etc. right? So that means that if we have your eyes in one location, it will not work. So somehow you have to go and manage eyes in different uh, locations as well or maybe distributed system you can go and use that feature, right? So I told you three questions. One question is re uh, related to uh, ICE. Yeah, you're asking something? No, no, no. Yeah. I'm, so I'm just writing something something down. Okay. So one question is related to that uh, ICE geographical location. It's different, different locations, how ICE can provide services. Do we have one database where from that particular database, all the devices getting authentication and authorization. The other thing is that the speed. So if ICE is getting requests for authentication authorization in very fast speed, so uh, is it possible for ICE to uh, grant the access? So that is one other consideration. Now, one other consideration I can tell you, and that is also very, very important. And that is one of the thing uh, one of the design aspect by which we are designing our network as well. So you think like this. Okay. So ICE is one server which is doing AAA, authentication, authorization, and accounting. And suppose <clears throat> if ICE, suppose I have one ICE or suppose, okay, let's just start with one. Suppose I have one ICE and if it will go down. So that means none of the devices will get authenticated in a network, right? 
So is it a design that we, we can consider? So answer is no. So then we can put three or four or five eyes in a cluster. So if one will go down, then other eyes you have, they can take ac uh, access or priority or they can become master and then they will start uh, uh, forwarding the request or replying the request, request right? That we can do. Uh -huh. But yes. the other question here is this, that is it a wise design that you have same type of resource and then you copy same type of resource five times and then all five resources they are doing same job but one is active and four is a standby all the time is it not wise right so that is one of the design consideration right. that why not take this ice take what are the main core feature of this ice and then divide this divide this core feature of ice in different parts part one part two part three and take these parts and group it take this part so suppose i have four different eyes let me try to draw here so what i am telling so design should be like this that you have suppose oh, you have eyes one eyes two eyes three and eyes four you have four different eyes and then what you are doing that in this eyes i have four major service we'll we'll check that what major services that eyes will provide so now what i will do that suppose this eyes that i have and let me slice it so slice one it so two three four one two three like one two three four one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So what I'm telling here is this, that suppose one, two, three, four. So why not take section one, group of section one in one location. This is one. And then group of section two in other location. And group of section three in other location and group of section four in other location and then in that way we are providing some sort of distributed services or maybe in this also you can create one one and one two so two of eyes in one location and two of eyes so part one dot one in other location part one dot two in other location like that you can further slice it and you can distribute the system across the geography and you can distribute the system across to services as well so in this case you, you with ice you can provide high resiliency you can provide the high availability and if any node will go down still the other node is there if both node will go down still you have cluster of two devices in other geographical location like that you can provide the designing for the eyes you can design eyes in a manner that you can take the services chop it down different different services group it at different different locations and then it will give you high uh, high capability feature now when we are talking about this one two three four so what is this one two three four you will see that in eyes although you have so many different services but majorly we have four component what are those four component? So at the moment, if the user will go and log into the eyes, suppose I install the eyes via the GUI in my uh, in my uh, virtual machine in, in my hypervisor. So once I will go and log into the eyes via GUI, so I will get some dashboard, right? In all the SDN devices, where are your login? Once you are login, you are getting the nice dashboard. So the dashboard that you are getting from that dashboard, you can go and do the configuration for entire eyes, right? From that dashboard, you can go and configure policy. You can pol uh, configure rule, rules, create groups, identity groups, etc., etc. Right? So that 
particular dashboard is nothing but pan policy administration node right then this is the dashboard here you can go and create all different type of policies and services so the second component we have is psn policy service node here you have all the policies everything in this particular node obviously whatever system or service we have we want to do the monitoring for that so for that you want to create the monitoring instance so for that we are creating the mnt node monitoring node okay so these three components are working very nice very good but what happened that uh, due to this evolution of network and we don't want to do everything manually because of this evolution of network there was a requirement that different systems can talk with help of api so what we can do we can do some sort of programming or automation so i can go and integrate ice with firepower or ice with any other uh, sdn product such as dna so i can go to ice i can enable one feature that uh, ice api feature basically that ice can go and get all the contextual information from different different devices so suppose uh, dna for example dna can go dna can go and have the information related to different different endpoints mac addresses etc a firepower a security appliance can go and get all the information related to different different profiles now if we go and enable this pixie grid feature then ice can go and learn all this contextual information in dna and ice integration i will show you at the moment we'll go and create the scalable groups automatically that scalable group you will see within the ice how ice is learning because we are going to ice and we are enabling the pixie grid feature at the moment you'll go and enable the pixie grid feature ice will start learning all those scalable group and other attributes so one very important component we have pixie grid pix grid it is there to get the contextual information from different different appliances right and now you can see that how ice can do so many different things we'll see later on as well now so far if we have any question you please feel free to ask okay 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 so what are the four components we have in ice oh pan yeah yeah yes and px group Great, yeah. Great, right. So these four components yeah. we have been in the eyes. Great. Now let's move on. Now I have shared these slides with you. They are very nice, good slides. And if you go and check these slides, so many things, so many um eyes production related things will get cleared. So you can see in the bottom that ICE is something that is providing zero trust work, uh, workplace secure network access for wired and wireless and VPN. It will provide you a scalable group. This is one of the nice feature I like uh, in ICE that it nice. is supporting this uh, micro segmentation, you can say, segmentation feature. So now what you can do, you can create different type of work group, for example, IT, sales, HR, servers or uh, prod servers non-prod servers and you can put some sort of tag there some sort of label there and according to that label you can create policy so suppose uh, i have two different work group it and hr 
it i can put level 5 hr i can go and put level 10 and if i create a rule that 5 cannot talk to 10 and that's it so user within 5 they they will not talk to a user within 10 now suppose if we if we want to achieve this task with normal cisco acl access control list then you have to write maybe 200 300 lines of uh, configuration and still it is not that much uh, you can say still it is not that much flexible or scalable that you can achieve from eyes within a few seconds right create the group uh, map uh, create the scalable group uh, create the policy apply it and it will work so that is the micro segmentation feature we have within eyes apart from that you can go and create n number of policies and if you are very good in policies and logic then no, no need to create good amount of policy only 10 to 15 policies can work for entire uh, organization right so you can create policies uh, you can do the micro segmentation within the network and then you can integrate eyes with different different appliances or such as cisco dna such as uh, ftd or firepower such as other security devices as well now in bottom you can see eyes can track and secure up to 2 million my god so number is big 2 million concurrent endpoint session so yes it is right it is very much capable tool and again you can see that with eyes we have asset visibility yes you can discover all the devices in eyes put some sort of username and password there it will provide you access control these are the basic thing of uh, basic things of acs you can provide guest access means you can create the policy for wi-fi users mac based policies and then you can redirect those uh, mac based authenticated users to some other portal so that is the guest access you can provide bring your own device access like for third party integration mdm it will provide you segmentation this is one of the nice product i like segmentation it can integrate with some other uh, appliances and with help of pixie grid you can go and share the contextual information to other appliances as well so other appliances as per ice information they can go and take action and then we have this takagas plus uh, feature within cisco ice that we can go and use this device administration so separate section is there you can go and create the takagas based rules and then policies and then you can apply and then it will work so you can see this is one list but within one feature you can go and check so many other features are there that we can go and utilize but this is the expectation if someone is working in the organization in the operations this is the expectation because once you do the deployment and designing designing and deployment then you have to work on operations you have to go and create the rules for guest access create the rule for uh, byot access create the rules for ip phones create the rules for map 802.1x do the segmentation segmentation is something that is providing granular security oops granular security it is providing it is taking this zero trust model to some other level now all the companies they want zero trust security or g zero trust model trust nothing some some sort of whitelist model that you are not trusting anyone and once they show some credentials or some sort of authentication once they do that then only you can trust them and provide the resource access oops all right so these are the features so what we have learned so what far learned. that what will be the overall design concept of ice why we are doing like this because this is the feature we want 100 percent availability if this is down then how the devices will get authenticated so that's why we are using some sort of distributed system then we have learned about different type of components that we have within ice what components we have within the ice we have four 
different components like uh, administration node, service node, monitoring node, and then the Pixie Grid feature that we can uh, send or even receive the contextual information or share the contextual information to other appliances so they can further take some other actions, right? And then you can see one, two, three, four, five, six, uh, seven features that you can see with the eyes. All these features you can go and perform the lab. At the moment, you'll perform the lab. This will be very, very clear. Mm -hmm. Now, okay. earlier, yeah, earlier I told you that you can go and put the labels over the work group, right? So here you can see that the red and green sorry red and uh yeah red and green red and green uh green is okay that means that trusted asset can go and do the communication with trusted assets likewise uh let me go and mark here but later on you will get better example than this because slide is here so i'll go and quickly show you this so simply users in this group can go and talk this so trusted asset can communicate with cloud app a b servers and this they can't go and communicate with the partners likewise partners can't do communication with servers the server a server b partners like that you know so tag based okay. communication is there this is something very interesting this is something called micro segmentation you can create segments within the network and in bottom you can see that you have full visibility all the devices within the network how so you have user group location based policy time based policy behavior of a network vulnerability assessment threat assessment postures device type everything ice is learning then you create create segments and then you can see location free app service access it's like any to anywhere everything you can monitor from eyes so it's like that okay so far you have any question no i'm just writing stuff down very good very good explanation all right so let's move on and let's check the eyes architecture component so as I mentioned you earlier, that ICE has four different oops, components. And uh, let me go and highlight this. So I'll understand, let's go here. Yep, node, personas, node type. So ICE and node. And these components are nothing but the personas. I will provide you service, network resources. It is just the de definitions that we are going to get. And then if you go through this slide, you will understand the source of definition of node. Uh, ICE itself is a node. Personas means what rules you have. So you have different type of rules. You have PSN, PAN, MNT, Pixie Grid. And this is nice diagram. You can see that with PSN, what you are doing, different, different components, what are the things you can do? PSN, we are creating the policies with PAN. First time user will log in. So this is the single pane of glass to log into the device. MNT is monitoring and T-shoot, troubleshoot log, reporting and logging and syslog collection. Pixie Grid is sharing the context so that we know. These things we have already discussed. This is the architecture component for the eyes. Then how this eyes is doing the authentication and how things are happening. What is the authenticator? What is the server? All this flow, everything we'll see later on. We have okay. independent section on all those things. So now there is one user you can see on top and this user wants to log into ICE. So once he will log in, where he will land? We know that any new user, whenever they will log in, so they will give username password and they try to log in, they will log into PAN, Policy Administration Node. From PAN, you can go and do all type of configuration and we'll see. So you can ask one question here, 
is it possible that we can go to ice and we can go and enable all the four feature in single node the answer is yes in single ice also you can go and enable all these four features pan is there obviously that's why you logged in then you can go and enable the psn you can go and enable the monitoring you can go enable the pixie grid yes you can do it in our lab we have like that only we have one ice so what we will do we'll go and enable all the feature in one particular ice and then we'll work right here you can see that each ice deployment deployment must have at least one pan so one primary and one backup it depends now you can see this particular diagram this is very good so let's just spend some time here try to understand so see this admin user log into pan and now you can see you have pan primary and secondary suppose you have two one and two and then you can see that you have distributed psn right so you can go and create the policy there is no problem and then if you do any change that means you want to do some update so you can go and push the update you can see this policy sync so policy is syncing to all the psns right so it's like that from pan the point here is this no need to go in this much detail in the diagram and all it's actually very simple the simple thing is this that uh, you can go update the policy it should go and sync to all the psns and psns has their local copy you can see so they have the small database within themselves so they will go and update that policy so in that particular location also your policy should be same whatever policy we are creating we are creating all those policy for one organization one corporate so that means that policy should be same in all the location that's why the syncing of psn is very very important okay so now what we'll do we'll go and check only five slides from now and then we'll stop okay yeah that's that's five only five slides so this oh, is slide yes, number yes. one now, because oh, no there problem. are there are uh, there there are too many information good informations and i just wanted to make sure that we'll go slow so we can understand each and everything and from uh, tomorrow class onwards or next class onwards what we'll do we'll do 50 50 50 percent will study theory and 50 percent will go and do the lab okay okay Today also, I will see if time permits, then we'll go and do the ICE deployment as well. Okay? Okay. Yeah, Yeah. it's uh, time goes by when you're having fun, doesn't it? Yeah, okay. All right. So now you'll see. Now everything will make sense. So you can see that uh, ICE is there. In ICE, what you are, disco what you are discovering? Networking devices right so we are going and discovering the networking devices within the ice in ice to whom you are writing the policies so in ice you are writing the policies for different type of users different type of endpoints or maybe you are writing uh, rules for different type of takakas rule for different type of networking devices as well okay ice can understand all these networking devices either legacy or new product everything ice can understand because cisco is also updating the ice um, software all the time so you can see 2.7 then you can see 3.0 3.1 then 3. maybe 3 is also got to release that we can go and check so like that ice also has the revision and life cycle uh, cisco is keep updating ice features and they are making this up to date so we'll see that what is common enforcement mechanism like creation of VLAN, the DACLs, ACLs, SGTs, the NAT devices, and all those things. Uh, we will we will see that all everything we have uh, uh, all these things we'll go and perform within the lab. So everything you will understand. We have good amount of lab sessions which will come. Alright. So how this pixie grid will come? 
Now, earlier I tried to understand, maybe um, four years back, uh, I tried to, uh, so how I was learning this ISO? Four components, okay. Okay, what is that component one? Oh, PAN, PSN, okay, Pixie Grid, okay, MNT. So I was able to understand PAN because PAN is something like you're logging and you're doing the configuration. I was able to understand, somehow able to understand the PSN as well. I was thinking PSN such as PSN is the actual engine which is doing everything. It's like a brain, like in our SD van, you may heard that we have a VS Smart Controller which is the actual brain is taking all the routing decisions intelligences within VS smart name itself is a smart so it's a VS smart so like that i was thinking oh this psn i can understand this will go and take all the decision pan i can go and create all the policies like pan maybe like manage v manage management plane like that you are creating the rules and then pushing to be a smart like that and then mnt also i somehow able to understand that okay monitoring and troubleshooting node okay no problem it's um, its job is to monitor attract the endpoints provide some nice gui or some nice output like that but it was always difficult for me to understand this pixie grid because I was new to this API and this automation and this, you can see that they have some publisher, subscriber, and then this and that, and contextual information. What does it mean by contextual information? Because something you can see, you can understand. Something is happening behind the scene in backup process. It's hard to understand. And once you do a configuration for Pixie Grid, you have to enable some features as well within ICE, like you have to approve it. So someone is publishing, someone is subscribing. It's like subscription-based uh, methodology. If you subscribe for one month, you will use that um, data for one month, like that, right? So it was very difficult for me to understand this Pixie Grid earlier. But once I start working on DNA and different different lab, then I understood. Oh, so it is happening. This thing is happening behind the scene. At the moment, you just think that pixie grid is there the main use of pixie grid is there to send all these scalable group suppose we are in in our lab we have to integrate dna with ice so in dna we'll go and create the scalable group for example a scalable group for it iot guest etc those scalable group will automatically sync with ice and even in DNA itself, because once you do DNA and ICE integration, in that case, DNA will become parent. So whatever policy will create, these contracts will, we will go and create in DNA, it will go and sync with ICE. Okay, so that means that within ICE, uh, within DNA, we'll go and create all those information, all those policy, scalable group attributes, and automatically with help of this Pixie Grid controller, it will go and sync within the ICE. So it's some sort of communicator in between two different appliances, but it is actually very interesting. Uh, you can see appliance or feature or service within ICE. Okay. Okay. Then you can see MNT, all the syslog messages and everything is going to MNT, all the devices, they are sending their log messages to MNT. That's easy and straightforward. MNT is used for logging and reporting. Right. So, uh, uh, then we have lab. We'll go and check this lab as well later on. That's fine. Yeah, that's fine. All right. So what we'll do, we'll stop here. And in next session, I will start from here. If you have any question, please feel free to ask. Hello, everyone. I'm going to give you offer related to CCI lab. In this lab, what you will find, so let me quickly show you that. In this lab, you have multiples switches. You can see you have more than 16 switches, 20 routers. You have a Steven full-fledged lab. Actually, this is complete uh, CCI enterprise 
1.0 lab where you can do section 1, section 2, section 3. Maybe you know that in CSA exam, you have three different sections. Means already sections are defined, but generally these three sections that students are practicing. And in this three sections, you can perform everything, all the tasks you can perform in this particular Eve NG lab. You can see the version and the supported images. This is exact match that we have in the exam as well. So for example, for SDVAN, you need to work on VAGs and the uh, vManage release is 18.4. That's the same release we have in the exam as well. So this will be your very much uh, similar lab setup that you have in your CCI exam for your practice purpose. Now, what you can't do in this lab, you can't do lab related to DNA because in this EVNG lab, we don't have Cisco DNAC integration and you can't do uh, ICE lab as well because in this, we don't have ICE integration as well. For that practice, you need full-fledged online rake from any good place you can go and have it. But apart from that, apart from 2.0, 1 to the 2 actually you can go and perform all the tasks even if you are not practicing for your cci exam for example you are practicing for your ccnp and you want to check your ospf knowledge bgp knowledge mpls knowledge uh, sdvan knowledge all those tasks you can go and perform in this lab with this lab i'm providing the video guide how to do all those tasks. Even we have the lab guide as well. So you can simply follow those guide. You can simply go and complete all those tasks. Suppose if you are new to the technology, so I have multiple free videos in YouTube and Udemy that you can go and refer to upskill your knowledge to learn the technology. And then simply you can go and use this particular lab and you can break any CCNP CCI exam means you, you will pass it um, uh, easily. Now, what is the cost? And these are the sections that we have in the CCI exam. So what is the cost of this? Because I'm offering this for the student. So I put very little, a small cost here. So you have to pay only 150 USD to get this particular software and uh, how you can go and get it you have to email me so my email address you can send me one email request let me write here ratnesh721 kumar721 at the rate gmail.com just email me and uh, send me the request and I will give you this particular nice software, full-fledged software, EVNG software or the file where you can go and practice your CCNA, CCNP, CCI, SD1, full-fledged SD1 is there. So if you can go and watch my YouTube videos, in YouTube I have 22 hours SD1 uh, video recording file and so many SD1 videos I have uploaded in YouTube those YouTube videos also you need some lab setup, right, to practice. So even if you're not preparing for your CCNP or CCI, you simply you want to learn uh, Cisco SD WAN, you can go watch my free videos in YouTube, use this particular lab setup, and you can perform your SD WAN. You can become master in the SD WAN. Likewise, if you're preparing for CCNP, in CCNP, again, we know that we have N core and one elective. For that also, you can go and perform all the tasks related to routing and switching, OSP, BGP, everything in this lab. It's a full-fledged lab. So I will recommend you to send this email right away. Take this particular lab, practice, enhance your skill, and become very good in the market so you will get high paid salaries. All right. After that, you go and watch the technology video. Thanks for watching.